Hello, I'm Pastor Ted Bible at St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Lima, Ohio. Thank you so much for uh, taking a few minutes out of your day to, uh, to stop and to, to watch this. I hope you watch to the, to the end. Uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you, uh, we'll be beginning a series on some, uh, some of the men of the Old Testament, some of those who are not quite so familiar to us. Uh, we're not going to be talking about David, Saul, or Moses, but rather we're going to begin a series where we're going to be talking about Boaz, Gideon, King Josiah, Caleb, and today I'll be focusing on Lot. But before we get there, I just want to invite you, if you have any prayer requests that you would like for us to be in prayer for you about, any joys or concerns, you may email those to us at limastmarks at gmail.com. Lima St. Marks at gmail.com, and we would be happy to be in prayer for you here at St. Marks. So uh, today we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 13 as we uh, begin our study on some of these uh, lesser known men of the Old Testament. And here we read this. So Abram went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. From the Negev he went from place to place until he came to Bethel, to the place between Bethel and Ai, where his tent had been earlier and where he had first built an altar. There Abram called on the name of the Lord. Now Lot was moving about with Abram. Also, had, Abram also had flocks and um, Abram... Lot also had flocks and tents, but the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their, progress, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And quarreling arose between Abram's herdsmen and the herdsmen of Lot. The Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Abram said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herdsmen and mine. For we are brothers. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I will go to the right. If you go to the right, I will go to the left. Lot looked up and saw that the whole plain of the Jordan was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt toward Zoar. This was before the Lord, Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and set out towards the east. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tents near Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, Lift up your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you see I will give you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go, walk through the length and the breadth of the land for I am giving it to you. So Abram moved his tents and went to live near the great trees of Mamre at Hebron, where he built an altar to the Lord. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading as well as to the hearing of his word today. In chapter 11, we learn that Lot lost his father at a young age, and although this must have been very hard for him, he was raised by his grandfather, Terah, and his uncle Abram, both whom served as good role models for him. Although Lot had good role models, though, in his life, it appeared that he did not retain some of the wisdom that had been passed down to him. And as a result, he failed to develop a good sense of purpose. We learn through our study that throughout Lot's life, he found himself too often caught up in the present moment, and he failed to consider the long-term effect of his decisions. Beginning in verse 5 of our reading today, we are told that a conflict was brewing between Lot's herdsmen and those of his uncle Abram. And based upon the size of their individual herds and the limited amount of land available to them to graze their flocks, that's what the issue was. Additionally, there could have been some conflict based upon whose herdsmen 
were viewed as the most powerful or influential based upon Abram and Lot. We are told in verse 2 that Abram was very wealthy in livestock and in silver and in gold. And although we don't read that Lot was wealthy, we can assume that he was pretty well off because he also had large flocks and herds and tents. But there's no mention of him having any collection or of silver or of gold. We are also told in verse 7 that the Canaanites and the Perizzites were among those living among them, which means that Abraham and Lot were living amongst hostile neighbors. And that conflict between the family reflected weakness and it made them vulnerable to the evil actions of their neighbors. So beginning then in verse 8, we read that Abram said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Is not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I will go to the left. Lot looked around and he saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zoar was well watered, like the garden of the Lord, like the land in Egypt. So Lot chose for himself the whole, land, whole plain of the Jordan and set out towards the east, and thus the two men parted company. Abraham lived in the land of Canaan while Lot lived among the cities of the plain, and he pitched his tents near Sodom. Once again, we are told, I want to remind you that the people of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. So what is happening in these verses? Well, first, the, the elder Abram sees the problem and he tells Lot this, this can't continue. And then he offers up a solution. Abram knew that arguments and disagreements among their herdsmen and ultimately between the two of them would be destructive in three different ways. Arguments and disagreements damage goodwill, that being their individual reputations. And it also damages the trust and the peace, which are the foundation of good human relations. Second, arguments and disagreements hamper progress towards goals. And then thirdly, arguments and disagreements make people self-centered rather than love-centered. Likewise, arguments and disagreements within our families, within our political structures, within our community organizations, within teams, and within the church itself can also damage reputations resulting in a loss of trust. Additionally, progress towards important goals will be hampered. This happens because there is too much time and too much effort focused initially on trying to resolve the conflict rather than working externally to work towards achieving the goals to advance the mission. And then finally, we will see the character of the people changing as they now become self-centered, protective of what they consider theirs, whether it is theirs or whether it's not. And they will no longer have a focus on loving their neighbors. This is so true today, isn't it? In fact, we don't have to look too far to find evidence of this truth. Just look, for example, at our political system, at any level of government, and you will find conflicts, you will find disagreements, and you will find quarreling that will lead to a breakdown of trust between people, a breakdown in the advancement of goals, and thus then a building of walls declaring that it's either my way or no way. How sad it is to see our society and even our own United Methodist Church in these kind of struggles. And friends, people are watching the church today just as the Canaanites and just as the Perizzites were watching Abraham and Lot. Abraham, Abraham then tells Lot in verse 9, it's not the whole, it's not the whole land before you. Let's part company. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Notice that Abram gave Lot the option of what, what land to choose. Abram, the elder, had the right to choose first. But with love in his heart for Lot and with faith in God that he would continue to provide for him, Lot, Abram gave Lot 
the first choice. So in verse 10, we are told that Lot looked around and he saw that the whole plain of the Jordan towards Zoar was well watered, like the garden of the Lord. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain of the Jordan and he saw it set out towards the east. Lot's character is revealed by his choices. He took the best share of the land, even though it meant living near Sodom, a city, we are told in verse 13, where the men were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord. Lot, it appears, was greedy, wanting the best for himself without thinking about his uncle's needs or the future of his own family. Good pasture, good pasture land and available water seemed like the wise choice for Lot. But he failed to recognize that Sodom, the wicked city of Sodom, the city that had been sinning greatly against the Lord, Lot failed to recognize that this place could provide temptation strong enough to destroy his family. And as we will learn in chapter 19 of Genesis, that is exactly what occurred. In chapter 19, verse 9, we read that when the two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, Lot was sitting at the gateway of the city. Who sits at the gateway of the city? The gateway of the city was the meeting place for city officials and for, and for other men to come and to discuss current events and to transact business. It was a place of authority and a place of status where a person could be seen and see others. We learn in chapter 19 that Lot is no longer living near Sodom, but now he lives in Sodom. And evidently he now held an important position in the governor, government, or he at least associated with those who held high positions in the government within the city. So what can we learn from our brief study of Lot? What is our takeaway from this message today? I believe, first and foremost, we should think before acting. We should think before acting. We should think deeply before making any decision. But certainly before making a decision that may have a long-term impact on our future and upon the future of our family. And that thinking process should include time for consultation with others, others that you trust, and it should also include time, spending time in prayer to God, seeking His direction for where we should go forward. A thorough study of Lot will inform us that he never consulted his uncle Abram to collect information or facts. He never consulted with him to gain knowledge of the risk or the benefits associated with choosing a location to relocate his family and his herds. Additionally, we don't ever read that Lot ever spent time in worship or in prayer to God. We are told on a number of occasions and on a couple of occasions in chapter 13 where Abram built altars to God and that he placed sacrifices on them. No mention is ever given of Lot ever doing such a thing. The second thing we can learn from our study of Lot is to not get sucked into or, or associate with an evil group or an evil community. We don't know why Lot decided to move into the city of Sodom. But once he did, he started hanging out at the gateway of the city and he began associating and being influenced by the wicked people of the, of, and, uh, and the culture of Sodom. As indicated in chapter 19, his decision to move into the, into the city will prove to be devastating for him and devastating for his family. Lot should have remained separate from the life and the activities of the city of Sodom. Paul writes to the church in 2 Corinthians in chapter 6 and begin, beginning in verse 16. He writes, What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them, I will be their God and they shall be my people. In verse 17 he says, So come out from among unbelievers and be separate says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. 
Lot was attracted to the glitz and the glitter of Sodom. And he perhaps believed that he could increase his wealth by doing business with them. And he no doubt believed that he could protect himself and his family from the evils of the, of the city. Lot got in over his head. And he and his family suffered greatly because he was not rooted in a relationship with God. Friends, being rooted in a relationship with God is, is so very important in all aspects of our lives. Consulting God on the big decisions is no more important than consulting God on the little decisions. God longs to be involved in every decision and in every aspect of our lives. If you haven't already, then I encourage you to invite him to be in your life. I, invite, I encourage you to invite him to guide you and direct you in the choices that you are making every day, the big choices and the little choices. Invite him to guide you in the directory and direct you in your journey of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that through our brief study of Lot, that we can learn from his weaknesses and from his life experiences to place our full faith and trust in you in all matters and in all decisions of our lives. Father God, fill our hearts today with your peace and your confidence as we continue to trust in you with every area of our lives. This we pray in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. As always, thank you so much for joining me today and thank you for your prayer support as well as your financial support. And if you would like to share a financial gift with us, you may do so by mailing it to St. Mark's United Methodist Church, 1110 North Metcalf Street, Lima, Ohio, 45801. Or you can go online to our website at limastmarks.com and just scroll down on the home page and you'll find a link there that says Give Now and you can uh, make your gift that way as well. If you're in the Lima area, I would like to invite you to come and join us next Saturday, September 18th. We are having a drive through fish fry. We've been doing this for many, many years. And uh, the cost is $10. And I invite you to come out and uh, pick up some delicious fish and all the, all the side trimmings with that. And, uh, and enjoy that and support the ministries here at St. Mark's. So until uh, we uh, our paths cross again, I pray God's blessing to be upon you and upon your family, and pray that you will make wise choices and seek God's direction in all that you do. Go in peace.